Hello, Lewis Black here. And before I start my rant cast, um, I, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be hitting the road. That's right. On September 21st, I'm going to be back out on tour. And it all begins in Victoria, Canada, and then goes on to Vancouver, Canada, and then goes on to Spokane, Washington. The next week, it all happens in Ketchum, Idaho. I don't believe I've, I have not been there. It's the home of Sun Valley, and I'm quite excited about going there. I'm quite excited about also that week returning finally to uh, Salt Lake City. It's been too long. Go to lewisblack.com. I'll be in Cleveland. I'll be in uh, Cincinnati. I'm going to Biloxi, back to Biloxi, Mississippi. I could go on and on and on, but check out the website, lewisblack.com. Uh, please come out and join me. And if you, if you hear this, uh, what I'm, you know, the, the, this announcement, tell others, tell them to go to lewisblack.com if they're fans, or even if they're not fans and they're looking for something to do, point it out to them. And you tell someone, and then they'll tell someone, and then they'll tell someone. And by the time it gets to the last person, they'll show up in another city that I won't even be performing at. And I hope that they enjoy whatever show they see at that theater. Um, I really look forward to getting out of this cable access studio and coming out and seeing people again. Uh, I am losing my mind here. I'll be back in a moment with the Randcast. Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap. I can't imagine that there's a human being on the planet who does. But, you know, with GhostBed, you don't need to worry about that. At GhostBed, you'll find Made in the USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25-year warranties. Plus, take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or, listen to this, get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS, oh, that's my name, at ghostbed.com forward slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. You heard me, limited. So get on it now. I'm telling you, now. Do it. This could... It could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello, and welcome to the 146th edition of Lewis Black's Rancast, entitled, And the Tour Begins. That's right. Or, uh, how many uh, antibiotics does a human being have to take before they're cured of everything? But seriously, folks, on to a more important topics. Uh, many people last week apparently, or enough, uh, were confused and wondering if the episode jet lag was the same as the episode jet lagged. Uh, two different words, but uh, I can understand some of the confusion if that's true, um, but it was two different episodes. Uh, if you didn't listen to the one last week or thought it was the same one, it wasn't. It was an entirely new episode about jet lag. Uh, I'm able to discuss jet lag a lot because it's been a summer of, of jet lag here and there. And uh, I've done some traveling that has caused that. I, I, normally it doesn't get to me, but once you go seven, eight hours, forget it. It's nuts. And, uh, and <clears throat> especially you're in that tiny, that, that tiny tube breathing everybody else's crap. It's, I know they say they clean the air. I don't trust them. Do you trust them? Really trust them? I just literally took a flight. Um, from uh, Vancouver uh, as a part of getting down here to Spokane. Um, and uh, it was, the tour started, I think I've said this a hundred times. For those of you still looking for tickets and want to go and can get a time machine, you can see that show. You can go to Victoria back on uh, last, you know, last Thursday or Vancouver. And then I came here, uh, but I got on the plane in, um, in Vancouver, a Delta flight. Delta, I like Delta, and uh, a good airline, uh, uh, and I got on there, and then you arrive in Spokane, and then apparently you have to get off the little teeny tiny plane, and then they put you in a um, shuttle, and the thing that would be fine about the shuttle, uh, if it wasn't you, they just packed this in. They, they The abuse has got to stop, Okay. Just, you know, just because it seems that we're willing to take this insanity over and over and over again, you're already seeing some folks who are flipping out and they're flipping out in the planes. How nobody flipped out on this bus is beyond me. They had us packed in 
And then once they had us packed in, they brought in the, the people in wheelchairs. They're the people who have to be on first. Okay? And you don't pack people in like that. All right? Not during the midst of a, of, you know, a COVID uptick. Get a second bus, Delta. You can fucking afford it. All right? I mean, it's ludicrous. And then, so it's like a second flight. All right? Because I'm transferring to another plane. So that's literally like another flight. It's 10 minutes, but you might as well be in a chopper with the thing going. Brruh, 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 brruh. And, and uh, there was only one guy. I didn't say anything. I was good because I've learned my lessons. But the guy behind me went, you know, son of a bitch. Uh, and uh, and I, I quietly under my breath said, yeah, I agree. And uh, but he didn't even look at me. I think he was ready to break one of the windows. Uh and, and so uh, <clears throat> that was the beginning of the tour. And, uh, um, and I'm, I'm sorry if you were confused about uh, last week's show. Uh, there's not much I can do about that. But uh, uh, if you missed it, go back and listen to it because uh, I think it's, uh, it's worth the time. I was excited by it. And that's probably one of the reasons nobody listened. And, uh, and it's, I'm now in, uh, sitting in a, out here on the road in... Uh, uh, Spokane, Washington, where uh, the um, it's a it's a it, the the homeless thing is seemed to be through the roof as it is in every town I go in, and it's not the more I kind of wander around, it doesn't. It's not just that they're homeless. It's there's a mental illness. Uh, they seem to be that many of them seem to be, well all of the ones I've seen today, of which there are about twenty in a day in a city, a small city, you know, passing me by. And they all, there's all something I, a psychiatrist, know. But do I know when things seem a little out of, uh, when folks seem a little out of touch with reality? Uh, I have a pretty good idea, a kind of wavering toward it from time to time myself. But uh, I, I get a sense of it when I see it. And uh, it's not good. And that it, it's everywhere. And that we came out of the pandemic with this, one would think that we would, would deal with it. But no, we don't have time because we want to shut the government down. And that's the best way to deal with the homeless is for the government to go on strike. That's what's happening. That, that's it. They, these are people who bitch about people going on strike and then they're going on strike. You can't do that. Okay? You're the government. You can't just stop. Can't do it. I, I, just seriously, and I've said this time and time and time again. Does anybody listen? No. Why would they listen to me? Why would they listen to any of us? Nobody. I don't think most Americans don't believe. Sorry um, if you're one of those who are like, yes, it has to shut down now. Well, most of us uh, don't agree with you um, because it doesn't help on any level. And we lose money. And what's important to m most Americans? Money. And what's it going to do to the inflation? It's going to jack it up a bit. And what's it going to do to the folks who work for the government? Uh, screw them, okay? And who's it going to hurt the least? Those who are fucking governing. Those who are in uh, Congress, okay? Because nothing happens to them. They still got their, they've still got their, they, if they're sick, they've still got their finest health insurance on earth. Their shit doesn't stop. Are they going to get their checks? I would imagine they are. I'm sure they've got some, that'll be the vote. Well, we're going to strike, but, you know, we still get our paychecks. It, uh, unbelievable. Just ex extraordinary to cross. The, it, it's just got to stop. Those in charge don't get to choose uh, to, to, to just kind of bring things to a halt because they can't agree on stuff. All right? It has to be automatic. You voted for this. This is money that has to be paid out. Okay. It's called Tufsky Shitsky, all right? And I don't know how long I have to say Tufsky Shitsky before anybody hears me, all right? And members of Congress, I just saw here, receive paychecks during a shutdown due to federal law in the U.S. Constitution. So I rest my case, and I'm, you know what? I'm shutting down now, too. That's what I'm doing. I'm shutting down. Okay, that's the end of the podcast. Those and it's a rant cast, not a podcast, Lewis. You're not talking to anybody but yourself and, and some people out there, but you don't see them. But God 
damn it. I, I can't believe I just literally, I thought that was true and it is true. They get paid. How do, I, how do you have the fucking nuts to, to shut it down? You get paid and tell the, the rest of those federal government workers, well, you know, screw you. And, those, and this all will affect the entire economy. How? Because it's, a, it's, called, it's called a ripple effect. All right? Don't make me explain it. Don't make me explain it. Don't make me explain it. You know exactly what happens. You know what happens when you're uh, the, uh, the, um, any of those uh, uh, any major sports teams go on strike? It's the same thing. It's all of those people around the stadium that just get screwed. All right. And it's the same thing with this federal government thing. They should not be allowed to do this or, you know, or you at least cut off their income. All right. Uh, or they should do something that at least it's just amazing. And now they're voting. Well, you know, they can they do it uh, bill by bill by bill? Who knows? And then there are people who say, well, they shouldn't really do it bill by bill. Yeah, well, do it. All right. Because it's got to be done. And we, you have to pay the bills, all right? You've got to do that. And also, uh, the act of it, it just, uh, in order to just incense myself, uh, uh, my tour manager, Ben, just told me that active duty military don't get paid. I mean, why should they? They're only protecting the country, you know? So why bother to pay them, all right? There's the level of their sacrifice, which is staggering compared to a congressperson's. You know, God knows the congressperson should be paid while the active duty military person should really have to have, uh, you know, have to be stocked up with uh, K rations, as they used to call them. I don't know what they give them now, but whatever it is, I imagine it's still shitty. Um, I can't get over this. This is what I come uh, This is what I come back to. All right. Uh, this thing looks like oh, looked like I had a, a kind of I'm so, very sorry about that. It should be a little neater and I apologize. To those of you out there are going to go, boy, you really should have pulled that sweatshirt down. I could barely understand what you were saying uh, as, it, as it rose. It rose with that, my anger. That's what it did. It's just incredible to me that, I, you, you, that, that they are allowed to even do this. And that people like Tommy Tuberville, I talked about this last week. I'm not even going to talk. I'm not giving him no more time. All right. They finally got somebody, the commander in chief. We could get a new commander in chief or something um, back. You know, we got one, one or two of them. One, I think that they were a little slip by Mr. Tuberville. He said, OK, how did how's that even fucking possible? How does one person stop a democracy from working? OK, we live in a democracy. All right. One person, one state. One half of one state in the Senate. That's what it is. It's one, one it's, 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 it's one ninety ninth, one one hundredth of the of the Senate, and he stops this. He stops the uh, the ability of the military to to choose the all of the people that have to be chosen in order for the military to to maintain its high functioning ability. Well, don't pay them and then don't put the people in place and let's see how far we go. Go, go get them. That was a, a, a motorcycle out there. And it's very exciting because it's like three 30 in the afternoon and you know, they got to get somewhere. God, of course, right here in Spokane, they got to get from one end of the street uh, if, uh, and get to the other end because that's really at the other end. Stuff's happening. You wouldn't believe it. I'm I'm stunned. I'm even sitting here. I can't even tell you how how incredible it is of what's happening at the end of this block. They're handing out gold bars, much like the ones that Bob Menendez got. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's called the transition. That senator. He, he's look. When you are found with gold bars in your house, one has to say there's a good chance you were up to no good. Either that, or you were hoping by getting one of those gold bars that is kind of a Christmas gift uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to your constituents, you're going to use those gold bars to give them fillings. Mm -hmm. Oh, you caught me with this. It was the Christmas gift I was going to give, the gift of gold fillings. So um, Senator Bob Menendez is the head, as I should have known and we'd be done already, uh, is the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which is why... Um, they're trying to get him out of there because, you know, if he's been taking bribes 
as the head of the Senate uh, Foreign Relations Committee, which they think he took bribes uh, from someone high up in the Egyptian government or in, uh, in, in, in at the Egyptian embassy. I don't recall which, but they, uh, you just can't really, you know, you kind of, he's involved in too many decisions that, uh, and, and as the head of that committee. And so we, we can't have that dealt with. So the, uh, and the Republicans should, don't seem to be worried about it. At least I haven't heard their, their commentary on it. It's the Democrats who are worried. The Republicans are too worried about, uh, you know, the, by, about baby Biden. That's the one. There's the real, boy, that's the problem. Bob Menendez, is, you know, certainly no, no sweat for them. Maybe he, uh, maybe he gave some gold bars out to uh, his fellow uh, senators. I don't know enough of Bob Menendez, that's for sure. And today, uh, I, as I uh, turned on the begin to give myself n- news again by slow doses, because I'm really, it's, it's, it's enough's enough. I come back, it's the same stuff. Who are we voting for? He's going to not be at the, uh, I knew he wasn't going to be at this uh, debate this weekend or it's tomorrow or Friday. What is, what if, I think it may be, I don't care. It's uh, tomorrow or Friday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it really, it, you know, he's not going to be at the debate. He's going to go up and talk to the auto workers and Joe Biden is going to go on the picket line and uh, tremendous, really, that'll solve a lot of things um, because, uh, I think it is important for the auto workers to have gone out on strike. And speaking of that, the the uh, Writers Guild apparently, my my one of my unions, uh, claims that uh, we're close to an agreement, and they'll be getting it to the rank and file, as we like to say, and uh, we'll fix it. We'll see if uh, we accept it, and and we'll be back to work. And then we have to see if the Screen Actors Guild, another union I'm in, goes back to work. I am not in the auto workers union because they would say, you don't know how to use a wrench, jackass. I am probably uh, one of the few people who salvaged a passing grade in industrial arts, which they used to teach uh, shop, as many people call it. I don't know what they call it now. And I was horrible at it. Horrible. Uh, and what's, it what saved me from failing that class was my notebook. Okay, that'll give you an idea. Of, of who you're dealing with here, the kind of skill set I bring to the room. So I wouldn't be in the auto workers, and I really wish them nothing but the best as, as they really did uh, go out on a limb when uh, they needed to back then to save the auto industry, and now they're turning around to the auto industry and going to the powers that be, and the, what are the powers that be going, Bleh. nope. Um, We've switched cameras now just to catch you up a little here because the other camera, and I don't know if you'll be seeing it, will be going in and out. Uh, This is an experiment that I'm doing to see if people um, get vertigo while watching uh, a a rant cast or a podcast, if the camera is askew for some reason. Uh, We didn't really know until afterwards, and I hate to lose any of those precious words that come fucking dripping out of my mouth. Um, Today... Uh, it was uh, announced that uh, they did a poll, and uh, you're going to love this. Here we go. Um, 71% of the American people feel that Joe Biden, uh, is uh, that his age and mental capability uh, is, 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 you know, it is a problem because uh, he's 80. That's 71%, 71%, 71%. Uh, 70%, 40% of the American people think that 77-year-old uh, President, former President Trump is, um, he's got, he's, he's, he is uh, also uh, is too old and has uh, some mental and physical problems like Mr. Biden, but there are only 40% of the American people that he, he has that 70% of Joe Biden. Even, they're three years apart. I'm, gonna, I'm 70 fucking five. Don't tell me that the 77-year-old is better off than the 80-year-old, okay? Don't bullshit me. Boy, but we can, here's why, all right? The, 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 the problem is, is that they, they, they can't hear Joe Biden. 
That's why they think there's a problem, because he speaks too low. The other is, is that they can hear uh, um, Donald Trump, which is why uh, he's a spectacular physical specimen and will certainly uh, outlive all of us. It's unbelievable. And in the meantime, it boils down to they don't like Joe Biden because they can't hear him. And they don't like uh, President Trump because they can hear him. Okay? Got it? That's how simple uh, things are going now. And today the, today the uh, Democrats were worried, or at least the folks that cover the Democrats, MSNBC, who can't get their head out of the Democrat ass, were going, well, you know, there's a big problem we've got because uh, they could run a third party candidate. They could run Bobby Kennedy and that could just completely undermine it. What are you, t- it's 13 months out and Bobby Kennedy is not known throughout the country yet except as the son of Bob Kennedy, is Bob Kennedy Jr. And we'll see if they, if they really are going to jump on this idiot and embrace him, okay? Because he's got the stuff coming out of his mouth is staggering. The stuff coming out of his mouth, that's, I mean, that's the, I'm sorry. This, it, it's the, the greatest satire ever written it will be considered the years of like 2000 maybe and, and uh, from the beginning, but, but from just just after 9-11 uh, till now and maybe even further. Robert Kennedy had a son and then the son uh, apparently, uh, they, they went to the zoo, the elephant sat on, on Bob Kennedy's son's head, on Bob Kennedy Jr. And so he's been a little wobbly in terms of his thinking ever since. Sonic, it's crazy. That's, it reads like, it, it should be in a great satiric novel, all right? It's like it, it is. It, we, it, we, if some, it, the, we are writing in our headlines the Gulliver's Travels of our time, um, and you don't really have to read it. It's not an assignment. So uh, that's what I've got from here. I, I really, uh, uh, and that I discovered today that oh yeah, uh, that, that fentanyl. I did not know that fentanyl. Uh, it was, it was, it, it was, it, I, I, for some reason, I, an idiot. I didn't realize it was used so much in medicine and, uh, and now being used, why wouldn't I realize that? Oh boy, we can get really high by anesthetizing ourselves. Never understood that. Not at all. Mm-mm. I did quaaludes, uh, maybe twice. And, uh, I could have broken my leg during quaaludes and still had sex and, uh, and kind of, uh, it, it didn't make it a drug that I embraced. Uh, it was kind of something that it was a little much for me, but give me those, uh, hallucinogens, you know, and, uh, where the world opened up and became something else. Now that's, that's a drug. I don't understand this. I don't get it. And I don't understand why we can't stop it, but, uh, that's a topic for another time. And uh, uh, before I go, uh, let me um, just share this with you because I think you're going to enjoy it. Black students at Florida. Yep, there's a surprise. Florida's Bunnell Elementary were called into a special assembly and warned they could end up being killed or go to jail if they get low test scores. God, that's like, and for all of you who celebrate, it's just like Yom Kippur. Is is God going to give you a good test score or a bad test score? And if he gives you a bad test score, uh, you're going to die. That's, and that's essentially, that's the Yom Kippur thing. You lived, and if you didn't live the life that, uh, if you weren't good, God would smote you. I mean, who, who has that? I, I don't have the time to go into that. I, I, I wish I'd I've done it a million times. Really? You put, put you have a, a you, you literally go to temple and just say, this is the one day God does this. He doesn't take like a week. Huh? I, I grant he's the all powerful, but please take a little more time so I can trust you on your decision making. God. And especially if you're going to base it on whether people are good, then you just smoke the earth, for God's sake. Um, but let me, I've digressed here. Superintendent 
so the, the, it was the, the special assembly. You've got a bunch of kids in there, and they're warning them that they could end up being killed or go to jail if they get low test scores. That's what my mother did that to me all the time. I, you know, by the fifteenth time, you know she's kidding. Uh, but superintendent, superintendent La Shakia Moore says there was no malice <laughs> behind the presentation, but concedes it was inappropriate. I mean, but thank you for you don't concede it. You just go, this is this is horrific that you would bring these children in and tell them that. It's horrific. It's staggering that you would do that. It is it should have been you literally you you should have said, I you know, you should have bit your tongue in front of them and just gone, I'm I'm so shocked I'm gonna bite my tongue. Uh, sometimes she went on to say, when you try to think, and this is a spectacular quote, and please feel free to use it. Sometimes when you try to think outside the box, you forget why the box is there. Takes my breath away. Um, Takes my breath away. I I hope you remember why the box is there. And uh, thank you again for joining me. We've got some great rants. Once again, let me repeat that. uh, Start sending them in. I'm back here and I'll be reading a ton of them. And we'll be getting them out to you uh, as soon as I can uh, can get them read. And I look forward to doing that. I hope you enjoy what uh, what has come down the pike today for you. And um, I will be um, uh, I'm looking forward to coming into uh, Boise on uh, Thursday, Boise, Idaho, Friday, Salt Lake City and Saturday in Grand Junction, Colorado. Then I head out to uh, Escondido next Friday. It means hidden, and I hope I can find it. And uh, Saturday again is um, back to Las Vegas to what will be a uh, either a hard rock or a mirage. Nobody seems to know. They took away the, the volcano, so I don't even know if I can find it. Um, but we'll see, and I look forward to it. Um, as I look forward to hearing from all of you about uh, and, and all of the things that are bothering you. Please take care of each other. Uh, thank you for uh, spending time with me because it, it does mean the world to me. And uh, hopefully I'll see you now that the tour's back somewhere down the road. I'd like to take a moment and talk to you about the sleep you're getting. Look, let's face it, there's a lot of stuff that I hate in this world. I mean, I got a list a mile long. I mean, it's why you listen to me, isn't it? I mean, maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but I know one thing that everybody hates, and that's bad sleep. It's at the top of my list. I mean, maybe you're lying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place, or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up dripping in sweat. Well, that's why I'm glad to partner with GhostBed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They just don't slap together mattresses like some of these other companies. They actually take the time to make a high-quality, made-in-the-USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve, and it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you want to check out the GhostBed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. I mean, how many more nights would you need to try it? Shipping is free, and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You heard me. That's 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code Lewis at ghostbed.com forward slash Lewis for 40% off site wide. Listen to me. It's a limited time only offer. So let's get on it. All right. Okay. Tomorrow at least. Lewis, I have a real problem with any woke folks. For crap's sake, let's take Bud Light as an obvious example. First off, I've heard some drinkers describe it as tasting like goat piss to begin with. Not sure when they actually sampled goat piss, but that's another rant altogether. Secondly, Bud Light attempted, perhaps poorly, to be inclusive to all people. Then, holy hell broke loose. 
when that Nimrod, Kid Rock, decided to stage his own mass shooting, proving once and for all he can either sing or shoot or the fuck. I think it's time for everybody, especially the rednecks, to lighten the fuck up. Sit down with your your glass of goat piss and your bag of lesbian M&Ms, and let's not, as a group of humans, give two juicy church farts about who's drinking with you. Like, okay, huh? Ooh, I feel a lot better now. Thanks. From Barry Yates, and I'm glad you feel better, Barry. I always like to help. Thank you. If there seem to be a lot of men writing in, um, I would uh, I just, it's because they have. And uh, not a lot came in recently from the ladies out there. If I can say ladies, I don't know anymore. Did you say ladies? He said ladies. Oh, no, he said ladies. The women out there. Oh, no, he said women. But um, um, le- I look forward to, I always do, <laughs> uh, whoever writes them. Okay, he or she or whoever. Well, let's get on with this. Andy Wallace. The other day over on the Twit Box, I saw a message from a man who was whining about the fact that his book was being rejected by some sales outlets. It had been canceled, of course. The title of his book is Democrats Hate America. Now, look, I don't care one whit about this Twit's book sales, but I'm fucking sick and tired of folks. Sure, some on the left, but overwhelmingly on the right that say the other side hates America. No, you fucks. None of us hate America. Not on the left, not on the right. Most of us wish that things could be better. But just because I don't want to go along with your religio fascist rantings about how you want things to be run doesn't mean I hate America. It means I hate the vision of the intolerant, racist, hateful America that you seem to want. And and if you disagree with that, just write in. And he was pissed. He said it, got it off his chest, and you can too. Here at, here at Rantorama, okay? Rantcast whatever. You've got that option. I'm sitting here. Send it in. Send them in. Something that should be simple has uh, made our friend, if I may call you that, Dennis, Dennis Moun or Moan, uh, it's upsetting. And it should be easy, but it's not. Lewis, what the fuck is with the seals they put over the top of virtually every bottle of product you purchase today? Most of them are impossible for any living human to remove without a chainsaw. Why the fuck do they use the same adhesive they use to adhere the heat tiles to the space shuttle? Aren't we supposed to get access to the product inside the bottle? Oh, but they are so thoughtful. They put tiny little tabs around the edge so you can break off your thumbnails trying to peel them back. If you are able to make some progress in removal, pieces of the seal invariably tear off and remain cemented to the edges of the bottle. Oh, yes, they do, Dennis. Yes, they do. Or if all else fails, you pull out a knife and cut around the edge to get the seal off. But that leaves you with the rim of the fucking shit they use all around the edge. Oh, boy. This makes it physically impossible to put the lid back on the jar because you can't get the fucking threads on the lid to line up with the threads on the jar. Do these cretins stay up at night to think of ways to drive us all mad? God damn it. Well said, Dennis. And certainly something that just drove me nuts again this morning. And then uh, you forgot that little plastic thing that they might put on to help. They like to do that. They have that little plastic thing. You pull on it. It's supposed to pull everything up and then it rips and then you're back to back to the, what you were yelling about. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you for sharing something that I think I think bothers everyone, young and old. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the young just kind of gnawed off still. All righty. Um, appreciate it, Dennis. 
We've heard from Audrey Lintner before, and now we're going to hear from her again. Dear Facebook, since you obstinately refuse to cram your sponsored ads where the sun doesn't shine, could you at least choose pages and products that I've liked? Yes, I, I know it's your website, and you're free to violate your own anti-spam rules, but holy bat shit, man. If I want to see how effective Botox is at destroying a person's ability to have facial expressions, I'll watch that little nitwit from Twilight. I don't care if Rachel Ray lost 30 pounds in 30 days. Big deal. I lost 290 pounds in 10 minutes by getting a divorce. I also don't give a rodent's rectum about those hideous shoes that keep showing up in my news feed. Give it a rest, huh? Show me an ad for a yarn or coffee or, or chocolate. Hell, show me chocolate yarn. I'll click on that before the page finishes loading. Other than that, bugger off. If I get as desperate to remove a wrinkle as you seem to think I am, I'll stick my face under an iron. Eat worms and fuck you very much. Scrolling in Kansas. Well, Audrey, nice to hear from you. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, don't, well, you won't, certainly won't put your face under an iron. Chocolate yarn, that tickled me. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Tim Wardman, for this. I apologize in advance. I'm European. I'm English, but I live in Denmark. Your net rants make me howl, and you expose the true power of satire. Well, thank you, Tim. I'm sorry if my inbuilt socialism offends the delicate U.S. sensibilities. We're not socialists. We just think about stuff. What in the absolute dog barking voice of Lucifer is the deal with you idiots and guns? If you think an AR-15 will help defend you from the government, then you don't know how tanks work. But every day we have to listen to Lauren Fuckface Bobert, Bobert and Marjorie Taylor Godbasher. Huh? Got a gun? Go into the garden, shoot yourself in the head, and save us all a lot of energy. Fucking idiots. Guns kill. That's what they're there for. Point it at a kid and the kid doesn't exist anymore. Just a cloud of pink mist. But hey, it's the Constitution. Abortion? Jesus, why are old white men deciding what women can do with their own bodies? Men should just keep their bastard mouths shut. I'm sorry, man. I really am. But your fucking country and the idiots that interpret the Constitution, and that means that they can buy a Barrett sniper rifle for personal protection, are fucking up my life, and I don't even live there. Manifest destiny? Fuck, dude. You all need to just calm the fuck down and start talking. Not screaming, not suing, and not electing an authoritarian orange shithead. Remember Germany in the 20s? Start talking, dickheads. Sorry, man, but thank you. Nothing to apologize for. It's your rant, you let it rip. I don't know what a Barrett sniper rifle is, Tim, but um, I really appreciate you taking the time and energy to write that in, and I'm going to Google. Thanks for sharing. I do appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.